Hi guys, welcome to Subscribers Draw My Nails episode 13. I love how episode 13 ends up being a Halloween edition. If you're new here, this is the series where I take your guys' drawings and try to recreate them in real life on my nails. There were so many amazing submissions as usual. Honestly, Halloween editions are my absolute favorite. I think this time I had about 400 submissions, so I really want to stress to you guys how hard it is to choose. This time I sort of mixed the two different types of subscribers draw my nails videos I did. So today I'm doing one hand of five different designs and then one hand of one full design. So I have chosen six different people's designs to do today. I do these videos, I would say every other month. I try to not overdo it. So if you want to participate, please just watch out on my community tab here on YouTube. And I just have one more piece of business before we start. I am so sorry that I said in my last video I would show you guys how I decorated my Jeep for Halloween and then I just didn't. Like I said, I was still over getting sick. The thought I had placed in my head to put it at the end of that video. Just poof gone. So here is my spooky Jeep that I have decorated for Halloween and if you don't care you can skip to this time to get into the video. And here's what I did to my Jeep. So I have my little pumpkin face. I cut this out by hand with some vinyl. I wrapped the grill. I have my little squishmallow in the window, my little grim reaper, my Jeep waves, and then on my taillights I have these little cutouts for pumpkin faces. And I also changed my D-rings out for orange too. So yeah, Halloween Jeep. So we're starting with the hand of five different designs. So for our first design, I have this cute bat one from Clover. There is their Insta. And they had actually submitted two very slight different designs, one a cat and one a bat. And I chose the bat just because I'm a little more partial towards bats for Halloween. This design low-key looked like a Squishmallow to me, so I just gravitated towards that a little bit. So let's get into it. So sometimes I do feel like building nails and sometimes I don't. I feel like lately I've been taking the easy route by doing a lot of full cover tips. So I want to get back to actually building nails and so I'm going to use my Anna Acrylics stiletto tips today but I am going to be skipping most of the natural nail prep work because we've seen me do it so many times. Then a specification that they gave me was the hat is sparkly and it's definitely more of a lighter purple. So I think I'm going to do a little custom glitter mix here. We're gonna get real custom today with the colors and everything like that. So I'm gonna mix this one and this one from Dumb Blonde Glitter. This one is Palma Violets and 11. This one's a bit more pinkish, but I feel like it'll work. Then just one scoop of each cause it's one nail. For my clear today in general, I'm gonna be using Young Nails Speed Clear, Young Nails Monomer, and then a number 10 Ellen Nailed It brush. I'm going to be doing nail art over the whole bottom of the nail, so we really just need to clear down here and then I'll put the glitter towards the top. I felt like that would be fun instead of just doing the glitter as a gel or something like that. I absolutely love nail art that goes over glitter acrylic. I just think it looks so unique. It looks busy, but in a good way. You know, for the glitter, I'm just putting down a super thin layer of clear just to hold on to the glitter. And we will just pat all of that glitter down. I really want it to be fully covered. So I'm just packing on as much as I can. Be a little messy to clean up, but it'll be worth it. And lastly, we'll just clear cap the whole thing. Now I'm going to file just really quick with my e-file and then I'm doing the thing where you put cuticle oil on before you buff it because it makes it super smooth and shiny. And I want that for my glitter. For my black and white today, I'm going to use this art paint from Daily Charm. I felt like it would be a good test for them. This stuff is super thick, so hopefully we can get nice one coat coverage. And I'm gonna map out the body. I feel like this black is covering super well. All right, actually very impressed with this gel look. It's not running or anything too, very nice. And let's just go ahead and do the little ears. Oh wait, no, we have to do the orange first. My bad. Using this orange from Model 1s. I feel like it's a pretty perfect Halloween orange. I'm going to do this line extra thick because we still have to put the little hat ridge on and that's definitely going to cover a little bit of it. Now we can do the ears. Hopefully the proportions on this don't look too off. The ears are gonna look extra big until we put the rim of the hat on. Well, nope, looking at the picture now, they're way too big. No, 
everything's looking a little lumpy. I'm hoping once we put the top coat, everything just looks super smooth, but let's do the, the brim of the hat. And I'm going to use the sissy clay, but we're gonna have to mix it because I don't think that this purple would match this like lighter sort of shade. If there's anything that I learned with this stuff, it's that you add mostly white if you're trying to make a lighter color and the smallest amount of the color, like that much. And we will try to just mix it all together now. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of the glitter just so we can stay cohesive. That'll probably be enough. I'm pretty much just going to try to roll it a little bit and then just put it on the nail. Maybe flatten it a little. I just want it smooth. But I feel like it's matching pretty good, honestly. It is so hard to not just touch this stuff and mold it, honestly. So hard. It just needs to be a little bit more flat. Okay, here it is. Honestly, I just did it really quick. Just really quick. I'm gonna cure it in place now. Maybe we'll put more glitter on it, I'm not sure. I feel like it does match pretty well, surprisingly, because this is a completely different product from the rest of the hat. I, for the life of me, could not find a purple bow that was like the appropriate size, so I found this pink one here in this little mix, and I'm gonna paint over it just to make it purple. I'm using a jelly purple because I don't want it to look too clumpy. We are almost done, but let's just do the face really quick. I'm hoping this will be easy because the eyes are just circles. Okay, a bigger one for the white. No! That's the only thing with this gel is it almost seems a little bit like spider gel where the gel will be a little like stringy. So you gotta be careful with that a little bit. Definitely too low. Perfect, for that one at least. Okay, we're getting to it. So now we just have to put on the bow and the rhinestones. I think I'm going to top coat everything before I put the rhinestones or anything else on just because I wanna make sure I can get everything covered. So first, let's do this top. The glitter looks great and I'm hoping everything looks a little bit more evened out since all of the gels seem to be just on a little bit of a different level. That happens with nail art though. And they did specify to have it glossy, which I totally agree with. I feel like the glitter and stuff, it kind of has to be glossy. Oh yeah, that's looking so much better. So I'm gonna use this super thick rhinestone gel for the bow charm and the rhinestones, and I'm gonna use just a dotting tool for it. Keep it precise. First, we will put the bow. Well, it looks super cute. And two iridescent rhinestones as buttons. They did specify iridescent rhinestones, but they look also kind of purple. So I'm going to use these ones. I know some of them look orange, but that's because it's on a light background. On a dark background, they will look purple. There we are. The next design we have is from Allison, and this is a long lipstick shaped nail, which is super exciting because I think a couple videos ago I had said I had wanted to do a longer lipstick shaped nail. So I thought that this design was just really cute with all the different little Halloween elements. So let's do the long lipstick shaped nail. So I have my base on the nail, but I have not cut the shape because we're doing a lipstick nail. I think like right there maybe? Maybe a teeny tiny bit shorter. All right, that shape looks a little intense, like I did a really big slant, but I can always change it a little bit during filing. To build the nail, I'm gonna use McCart Cosmo Black Poly Gel. This is a black poly gel with a bunch of different colored glitter in it, and I thought it would be perfect for this base. Because of course we can always do, you know, just a black base, but you know what's better? Glitter. Just going to spread it all around. Okay, thought this would be a black poly gel with the rainbow glitter, but it looks like it is a clear-ish poly gel with a lot of black glitter and then some other color glitter, which totally makes sense because black is so pigmented that often it can be hard to get a good cure all the way through, which is why I was going for some thin layers, but that's actually perfect. That way we can make sure that it will cure all the way through. And it should still be dense enough to work with what we're doing here. This nail is looking so wide right now. We'll definitely clean it up a bit whenever we file. That poly gel is just looking a little thick on the edges. I'm just trying to get a good like first layer on the nail before I really do any building of like the apex or anything like that. All right, I've built that up pretty well. I don't feel like I can do much more without filing. 
but I don't think I'm gonna probably add that much more onto this. I feel like it's gonna get pretty thick if I do. So I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit and we'll give it a nice long cure. Then wipe, cause it's gonna be so sticky. And I think I'm probably just gonna hand file this. I don't think it warrants a whole bringing out the e-file. And I think the base is definitely dark enough to do our nail art on. Here's the filed result. So let's start with the nail art. I am first probably gonna try to map out everything in white, just because colors are gonna have a really hard time showing against all of this dark color. So we just probably should just lay a base work. I feel like I wish that this nail art was just like a little bit thinner. Like I appreciate the opacity, but it is very hard to spread. I'll try something bigger for this spot because this is going to be our pumpkin or trick or treat pail. Okay, that's going to be our pumpkin. It doesn't have to be an exact pumpkin shape because it's a pail, not a regular pumpkin. And I do think I would like to have a little handle on it if we can try to maybe see it. I don't know what color I'll do it in. Like I had said, these gels are a little bit sticky, but the nice thing about working with poly gel is if you're gonna do nail art on top, at least on, you know, like the base layer like this, if you're wanting to clean up, it's really easy to do so because poly gel does not break down with acetone. And I'm having a hard time cleaning this gel up with just like regular alcohol. Okay, so I think there's a lot going on here. So I think definitely some candy corn, some suckers, the eyes and gummy worms, just so we have some variety and color. I think the only thing I'm gonna leave out are the little mini pumpkins. Cause I think that might be a little bit too much going on for me to be able to draw out legibly. So we'll start with candy corns. Okay, now let's get all of our colors out, like almost like a little rainbow. So I'm gonna be using lots of these from Enel Couture and then that same orange from earlier. I'm pretty excited to color all of this in, so let's do it. I'm just gonna start just one by one. We'll do the sucker, the red. I don't think we really have anything else red on this. Let's do some of the gummy worms. Okay, so we have the blue. Does it fade in or does it just abruptly stop? I don't remember. I don't think I've had sour gummy worms in a really long time. Anytime I say this, people are always like, what does being vegetarian have to do with candy? Or last time it was, what does being vegetarian have to do with Lucky Charms? And what it has to do with is that there's gelatin in it and gelatin is made from animal bones. And so vegetarians don't typically eat that. So that's why, in case you guys are like, what do you mean you can't eat gummy worms? Cause <laughs> You're a vegetarian, usually it's that. Lots of things have gelatin, way more than you would think. I think this yellow is a bit brighter than what candy corn normally is, but that's okay, we're gonna pretend. Candy corn is something I also haven't really had in a really long time, but for the reason I just don't like it. <laughs> it's coming together. All right, more eyes on this one. Let's see, not too bad. Okay usable let's try the other one and i'm going to try to put you know just a little bit of red on the eyes but i'm gonna wipe it off if it doesn't look good like if it doesn't give the stressed look it's supposed to give i don't know if there's enough room on it mm. yeah we'll leave it and now for the little pumpkin pail i'm just going to fill this all in first and foremost I'm going pretty heavy handed on this because I don't really wanna have to do a second coat. And this stuff levels out pretty well on its own. So if I can just do like a really thick one coat deal, that would be amazing. There we go. See that leveled out so nice. Just trying to get the air bubbles out though. Perfect, I'm gonna cure it. Did I just draw that correct the first time? Granted, it's all a little bit close together, but I'll take it. This doesn't happen very often, probably because I just had dinner, so I'm not shaking anymore. But wow, okay, perfect. Again, yeah, a little close together, but I will take it. But we'll just fill it in really quick. All right, this could not work, but I think I'm going to do the handle in black. I feel like you'll be able to see it. Maybe you won't. I don't know. I think it's fine either way. And then I do think I'm going to outline the pumpkin. I just feel like it doesn't look completed. Okay, the pumpkin like trick or treat bag kind of looks a little bit more like a lock, but 
it's okay. That was definitely my creative liberty that didn't really work out, but we're done with it. And I still think it looks really cute. So let's put a top coat on it and we should now see all of the pretty glitter come to life from the poly gel. Wow, it definitely looks even better now. Third, we have this design from Tiffany and I have never done a spiral nail before and I wanted to do that challenge today. It seemed simple enough with the nail art that I can spend a lot of time on the spiral and just give it a really good first go. And I thought that the mummy unraveling idea with the spiral is just so creative. So I'm really excited to do this. I have never even attempted a spiral nail before, so I am nervous. I just went and grabbed a straw because I don't know what else to do it with. And then I'm gonna do it with poly gel because I feel like that would be easiest. I could do acrylic, but I just think poly gel will be the easiest to just like literally squeeze out and you know, roll. Should I base coat the straw first? I think I should. Should I peel off base coat the straw? Yes. To be able to get it off easier, I don't feel like it would stick that well, but in the event that it does, I'm gonna use a peel off base coat for the spiral. That way we can just easily get it off. I don't wanna break it. I'm not sure how strong this will be either. And then as far as the rest of the nail goes, I have no idea what I'm gonna do to attach it or what I'll use or build up the nail. I have absolutely no idea. I figured spiral now, rest of the nail later. I feel like that's probably long enough for our spiral. I doesn't need to be super, super long because I would like to be able to wear it for a little bit. It's just like, then something tells me I should go sort of stand with this in front of my heater for a little bit to be able to get it out easier. So I'm gonna do that. One moment. All right, it's feeling substantially squishier. I'm nervous. Okay, I kind of feel like I should just, oh, I kind of feel like I should just go for it. Probably put it on and then. All right, here we are. I think that went okay, but it definitely needs to be flattened a bit, which I'm really nervous to do. It definitely didn't really come out that evenly. And look at that air bubble. Another big air bubble. So we're missing like kind of like a little chunk here. I'm starting to think that this is like too spaced out, like the spirals. It's like, that's a lot of space. Or is it fine? I don't know. It looks good on this side, but the other side, I don't know. I've been working on this one for a while and I feel like I'm really trying to save it, but I don't think it's gonna work. I think I'll probably need to do a new one, which I'm really sad about. On this side, it looks great, but then on the other side, it's really thin. And then this one, there's way too much space. I'm gonna try adding a little bit, we'll see. Okay, actually, I think I've made this one work. I've feathered this down because I anticipate sticking it on my nail, like around here. And I think it'd be easier like that. Hopefully it pops off all right, but I'm going to just cure this now. And I think it's all right, except for since these air bubbles are killing me. Cured for a very long time. I'm gonna wipe as much of the sticky off that I can. Weird texture. Then I'm like not sure how to go about like trying to get it off. Ooh, okay. All right, I see. Since I did the peel off base coat, I can just kind of like dig my nail under and then try to lift it a little bit like that. I looked for a disposable straw, but we don't have any. Then I can just like crush it. Oh, <gasps> no. Okay, I need to be more gentle. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, is that gonna work? I'll have to see, but oh my gosh. Cool. I feel very proud in this moment. I need to cut this part off. Cause it's not helping when I'm trying to see if I can put this on here. Same like that, except I need to cut more off. Ow, that one hit me. <laughs> Do you see that? Look it, it's perfect. Almost. A little too much of a curve right here. So a little bit more off, but that oh my gosh look guys it's gonna fit perfectly i just need to clean this up a little bit figure i can just cut all of this base coat away before i file it save myself a little bit of effort doing that all right now i'm just going to i guess like file up these edges a little bit oh no they don't really fit that well okay i guess it'll be e-filing very very carefully time
All right, so I've cleaned it up and it's looking so nice. So I have a really good spot to put it here. Like it fits the snail perfectly. And I'm hoping that that means it'll hold on a little bit. I'm having a hard time deciding if I want to like glue it down first and then base coat or like base coat and like smush it in there. I think I'm going to do that. So let me go prep my nail and put my base coat on. I'm not sure if I tried to like adhere this with gel if it would cure all the way. So I'm just going to glue it. Then we're going to sandwich it with more poly gel and hopefully that should all work out. I had to slightly change my plan and adhere it with acrylic because the glue just wasn't wanting to adhere to the base coat and the poly gel, which can definitely happen. So I just adhered it with acrylic, which was fine because it needed a little bit of space to be filled in anyway. And then my plan for this is to just do poly gel on top to build up this and, you know, really attach it. And then we can do the nail art on top of it. So that's what I'm going to do. Just like a nice big glob there. I'm very stressed about this spiral one staying on. It doesn't feel that sturdy because it's poly gel. Poly gel is sturdy when it's like built up on a nail, but I don't know about a spiral. Are spirals very sturdy to begin with? I don't think so, but I'll be honest. This was a lot less painful than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to be here all night trying to get this spiral. So if you have been wanting to do a spiral nail and you've been intimidated, I would say just try it. It's not easy, but the straw really does kind of, you know, do all the work for you. Although I'm going to have to file behind here because this is touching the back of my finger and it's driving me insane already. Now all we have to do is draw the face and the little black slits, which should be fairly easy. If I start with the face. Then for the eye, I feel like those look more cute than creepy. <laughs> I think they need to be farther apart. Last for these is just the red on the eyes. And finally a top coat. They did not specify glossy or matte, but I think I want to do glossy on pretty much all of these. I just feel like it looks better. I do like matte, but it's just not for every situation, you know? Then I guess I'll just go around and like top coat all of this too. So strange. For this design, I wanted to challenge myself on the hand-drawn nail art a little bit. So here's this design from Danielle. And I felt like when I was looking at it, I was like, I can do that. And then I looked at it a little bit more and just thought how hard it was going to be. But I'm really into hand-drawn nail art right now and really wanting to practice more. So I thought that this would be a really good design to give a try. The whole hand design that they had also done was really cool. But that's a lot of hand-drawn art for me. So I just want to do this nail that that I really like that was inspired by silhouette jewelry. So let's see if I can do it. For this nail, I actually will be using a stand just because I feel like getting all of those small little intricate details would be really hard while moving my finger. This one is so pretty. So I'm starting off with some Prey tip primer because my grubby fingers have been all over this tip and I want my gel to stick to it. I am just going to start off with a black gel. And another. And for this, I'm gonna go in with a matte top coat since this is all nail art and we're on a black gel polish layer. Black gel polish can have a tendency to smudge if you're trying to like say wipe up your lines with alcohol. And since the only other color I'm using on this is white, it could get messy. So this will just help nothing bleed, make it a little bit easier to draw on. Alrighty, I've also gotten out some just regular black and white gel polish in addition to my art paints that are really thick because I feel like there's a lot of like wispy lines on this and not 100% opaque lines. I don't know what to start with. So I think I'm just going to start with the skull. That seems like my best bet. <laughs> Hopefully this is address the process. I feel like this... <laughs> regular paint isn't looking quite how I was hoping. So let me try the gel paint again. I gotta get me more colors of specific gel paints for nail art and stuff because they really are so much easier to work with. Like instead of doing three, four weird layers of that, I can do one layer of this. I feel like this jawline on this is weird. Way too narrow, I think. That's a little better, maybe. I feel like that looks a little bit better. I figure same approach that I have been doing, kind of outline everything and then details later. So what are you guys going to be for Halloween if you are doing something? I always feel like I want to dress up, but I never have anything to do. 
I don't party anymore. Not that I could if I wanted to because I don't have any friends that do either like that. And then I don't know any events. And then kids don't even trick or treat in my neighborhood because I live on a busy road with no sidewalks. So it is dead on my street on Halloween. Honestly, not that I really want to leave the dogs that much anyway, but I don't know. Like, do I even bother finding a costume or something? I really want to go to the Bell Witch Cave, which is only about an hour outside of Nashville, but I don't know. I'll see if I have time to sort of plan that out. Every other year, pretty much, I usually go back home for Halloween. So usually I also get a little homesick if I don't go back. I am struggling on this one. I have been working on doing a million little itty bitty touch ups on this for I don't even know how long at this point. And I think that it's probably time to just stop. This was a lot harder than I had anticipated. I think it's, it's just on such a small scale and like skull anatomy is very difficult. So props to the person that drew this because wow, it's pretty hard. I feel like a lot of the white kind of looks muddy from my cleaning up, but I also feel like that's kind of the vibe of the drawing. And some of it does look like almost like too white. So I'm gonna dilute some black, like really, really, really like just a bare brush of it and go over a little bit of some of this white to make it not so like stark white because I feel like it just like doesn't really go that well. I'm just having it be stark white because I feel like it's supposed to be like Victorian and faded and stuff. This one is probably the least successful so far. I'm gonna give it a last cure. You guys can let me know what you guys think of it. Hopefully it's not too bad. I feel like if you just take a glance, it's okay. But if you really start to look, it's nowhere near the drawing, but can't win them all, you know? So we'll just do one last cure for it. And then I feel like matte for sure for the top coat, but I've seen people say that matte looks better if you put a glossy over it first. So I'm gonna do that. And we can also just see how it looks glossy then. I feel like it looks a little bit better now that I put that top coat over. Also look what I accidentally did while I was doing the snail. So now let's put over a matte top coat. I'm going to try this one. I got this one in one of our Etsy mystery bags the other day and I wanted to try it. Let me get the sticky layer off of this though. And there we go, there it is matte. Now I'm just going to glue this one on. Some glue and hold. And there we are. Our last one-off design is this Gengar, which I knew I had to do the second I saw it because Gengar is David's favorite Pokemon. So I knew if he saw it, he would be sad that I didn't do it. So I decided to do this one for him. This person wanted to stay anonymous. It is a super cool idea and I'm so excited to do it. So let's get into our last one-off design. For this nail, it is obviously pretty short. So I've just put on a coffin tip for it. Now we're gonna just cut off most of the length, I think. I feel like it's kind of hard to gauge whenever it's my thumb because it's just a bigger scale. I think that looks good. Ooh, short, fun. I don't mind if the thumb on nail sets are like significantly shorter because it does make your life easier. And if you have all your nails out, you're not even really looking at the thumb. Like as long as these four nails look good, it's all right. And we'll just clean that up a little. Make it go in a little bit more. I've been having a difficult time trying to decide how I'm going to sculpt this out. And I've come to the decision that I'm pretty much just going to do a clear acrylic base. And then I'm going to use that sissy clay to sculpt everything out. I was looking through all of my stuff poly gel, acrylic, trying to find a color even similar. And I feel like I can't really sculpt these itty bitty teeny tiny details of the arms and nail 
nails and stuff like that out of acrylic. So I would have had to color match the sculpting clay to the acrylic or poly gel or whatever I used as the base anyway. So I figured we might as well just use the clay to basically do the entire top layer, but I'm just going to put down this clear acrylic base for the structure just to have something on there so that the nail isn't made out of sculpting clay. So this part isn't really anything exciting. All right, let's try to make this color. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do. Since it's such a cool tone, it's almost like a purple gray. I think I'm gonna start out by making gray and then adding purple to it. And we'll probably need a bit. I'd rather have extra rather than not make enough and have to try to remake it again at the same color. I don't have a ton of experience with this clay still, so I'm kind of just guessing here. Okay, after much mixing, I think I got it. And look at how malleable it is now. I went and basically just like stood in front of my little space heater with it. And now it is so malleable. I'm gonna have to do that, like go back and forth a little bit with it so that it's so much easier to work with. Okay, so now we can actually start doing a little layer of it on our nail. And for this, I just want like a smooth layer to start out with on this, just for the color. Probably don't need quite this much. I'm gonna smooth it out a bit. I've smoothed it out pretty good, but I'm just gonna cure it and then we'll just file it a little bit, make it a little sharper at the end. I think I'm gonna start on the arms. I'm just having trouble with like how small these like little pieces are gonna be and like how to roll them up. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it to stick to the nail and not to the gloves. All right, I'm gonna just let that sit so that it can kind of just like adhere to the nail a little bit. And I'm gonna try to get the other arm on. That looks like the somewhat right place. Let me get a little bit of just alcohol on here because I feel like that definitely can help it stick a little bit better before just like going in to sculpt it. Okay, I feel like that's actually pretty good for the arms. It's just the little fingers now that I think are gonna be hard. Hmm, it's gonna, you know, alcohol to kind of solidify it all together because I don't want it to move. And then this is definitely a long shot, but I have these scissors, right? And I think if I make like the tiniest little slit in it, I'm thinking maybe I'll be able to push it in. <gasps> it worked. Okay, now that that worked, I'm gonna redo it. Absolutely perfect. <gasps> Amazing. Now let's try for the ears, just little spikes pretty much. All right, I'm trying to do this without just like curing it directly on my skin. So I'm having it like hover. All right, now that we have the ears, I'm just gonna try to do a bunch of these little spikes. I'm not 100% sure how. I think I'm just gonna put like a, a thing right there. Right, and then and once we can actually get it to stick, I can go in and do the spikes with the scissors again. All right, let's see. I was really hoping that I wasn't gonna have to make a bunch of like itty bitty teeny tiny spikes and try to get them to stick, but I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. We have all the sculpting done and stuff like that. So now I'm just going to put on a little bit of a super thin matte top coat to try to just even out everything a little bit. It was really hard to get everything super smooth while sculpting it. So I just want to be able to hopefully easily draw the face. First and foremost, mapping out the eyes and mouth with some white. Now I'm gonna try to just outline the smile. This perhaps should have been another one that I maybe sculpt not on my actual finger because I'm doing this sideways, which I don't think is helping. That look great. I think the mouth needs to be open a little bit more. I feel like I'm regretting not making a gel color for the main body now because I feel like there's places I need to touch up just in general because the clay, and this happens sometimes with just like gels or this clay or whatever, where if you get like alcohol on it in a certain way or file it, it leaves like weird little white marks. And I feel like I have that all over this a little bit and it's looking a little messy. And so I wish I had this color to kind of go back and clean up the edges. All right, so I am gonna just try to make a gel that matches the color. Good base there for that purple. Uh, did I just do that in like one guess? I think so. It might be a little bit more purple, but it might be a little bit more accurate. That's cool. Okay, well, 
I'm thoroughly surprised. Let's see if we can't clean this up a bit then. I feel like this one has to look nice because I already know that David's gonna like really look at it since he loves Gengar. Okay, that, that matches pretty well. I feel like we can totally get away with just putting like a nice layer over and it's gonna just even everything out and not look like I painted over some different color. And I can have something to clean up around the white and everything. Wow, so much better. So glad I did that. So, so glad. And I might come back and try to outline like the eyes in black. Cause I feel like it just might make it look a little cleaner. I'm gonna finish up the face really quick and then I'll be back when it's time to top coat. Or, oh wait, I forgot to do the pupils. I was about to say, okay, I'm done, but can't forget to do the pupils. All right, this is good. We're gonna get kind of like an off brand Gengar, but good enough for me. We don't need the name brand. We can have the generic. I'm gonna do glossy on here. I feel like matte will just kind of make it look dull and show all of the minor mistakes that I have made. So we'll not do that. For our full hand design, this was a really, really, really hard choice because there were so many good, like full cohesive sets but there was one element on this one from Kenzie that obviously drew me to it. The actual nails are obviously a little bit simple with just the splatter on them. I have a little bit of a hard time saying this, so please forgive me, but obviously the main attraction is the Demogorgon charm that we're going to have to make and I'm going to do this completely from scratch and I felt okay tackling this because now we have those sissy clays that I used a couple videos ago and I feel like I have enough resources to really make these intricate charms now with all these different cool products that have come out so I just really wanted to tackle a big charm like this. I also don't normally sort of steer towards I just wanna say more fleshy designs because I don't ever want anything to get flagged, but I think this is okay because it's not even a real thing, right? Hopefully. <laughs> so thank you, Kenzie, for this design. Let's get into this. Okay, I'm nervous for this one, but let's begin. It's kind of like a fleshy color and I have this, so I'll probably work with this mostly for the base of everything. I feel like it's kind of hard. It's like really detailed and also not detailed at the same time. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to end up using like this entire <laughs> container. I'm just going to start with the center and for all intents and purposes, obviously that part would be hollow, I think, but it can't really be hollow here. So it's just gonna have to be like a little just concaved. And I'm honestly not worried about a lot of these parts here being perfect because we're gonna have to put a bajillion little teeth and a ton of texture all over this. So any prints or anything, I'm not gonna be smoothing anything out for now. I have a nail here to try to gauge how big because then if I have a thing it'll be like that. Is that a good size? That might be a little big. I figured we would just start with this part right away because this is definitely going to take the longest amount of time. The rest of the nails are pretty easy but this, this is going to be something else so. And voila on that. It's not much more to do on that. Then I think I'm going to cure it just so we can have it and I can stick things on it without you know like moving it. All right, and then for the petals, I feel like they're a little bit sharper, maybe a little more triangular. So I'm gonna try to do that a little. This thing is gonna be huge, but I feel like it'll look better big and I think it'll be a lot cooler that way. Could make it small, but then I don't feel like it'd be as much fun. Now I think I'm gonna try to have them like curved up a little bit. I think I'll be able to do that. I'm going to make all of the petals before I cure them because I don't trust myself enough to cure them as I do it because I'm terrified at spacing. So this is the only way I can ensure that we get five on there. I don't think they need to be like super perfect, but I just kind of want them all to be the same shape and size-ish. This is probably going to be one of the biggest charms I've ever made. And thankfully we have this clay stuff now so that I don't have to try to do this out of poly gel or acrylic. Can you guys imagine what a mess that would be? Just scraping all of this out pretty much probably use most of it. And then off camera, I am heating this stuff up with my little space heater and it makes everything go so much quicker. And I am referencing a specific picture that I will show you guys because it's just so much easier for me to just follow one picture opposed to just looking at a bunch of different ones. So for the proportions and you know, like shapes like that, I'm kind of following this one cause it varies a little bit. I just wanna make sure the silhouette is right. And I think that's an okay size 
pour it. Like it's definitely gonna cover most of the nail, but it's fine. And then before I cure this, I want to have it slightly upwards. Like I want it to be like coming at you a little bit, not a lot, just slightly. Give it a little bit of a movement or something. Well, hopefully it all comes off once I've cured it because now it is pretty stuck to this little mat. I think that looks good. I'm gonna cure it now, quick. <laughs> So good news, it came off all in one piece. I cured it for a very long time. And then again, on the other side, obviously it's not really, you know, like refined. I'll do the edges after. I think I'm going to grab out some red and mix it with a little bit of the fleshy color. And I'm going to probably just like spread it around and start getting some texture in there. Cause I don't feel like I can do the texture with just gel or anything like that. I actually might add some black to that. So this is a little marbled and I think I'm going to leave it like that because I think the little bit of differentiation in the color would be just fine, give it some more dimension. I don't even know how to describe like what I'm kind of wanting to do with this. It's kind of just like smush it on and like feather it out kind of and kind of just like have a little bit so that I can make some texture and I don't know, it just look like another layer. You know what I mean? Also do not worry when I make too much of one color, I save each one because I'm sure at some point I will be able to use it. If I need it now, I'm sure I'll need it again. Okay, see like that. And then I'm gonna just start feathering and smushing it all around. I almost was gonna wait to do this little Demogorgon charm after I did like the full nails themselves. And I decided that probably wouldn't be that smart to do in case I need like, you know, my fingertips or whatever. Honestly, it looks a little bit like a mess, but so do these things. So I think that's okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to cure it like this. Of course, I'll clean up the outsides and stuff probably towards the end because it's gonna get a little bit messy and pull off. Okay, so I feel like we need to probably put in some red now with some gel. Don't worry, we will get to the teeth, the bajillion teeth. I have all different kinds of reds so we can have lots of dimension. At first, I felt like a jelly would be perfect for this scenario. And then I'll probably get out another red that and I'll also use these for the other parts of the nails and then a sort of like dark cool toned burgundy just in case I'm gonna just see how just like this red looks and I'm just stippling it on with this brush Ooh, that's really red well I feel like it doesn't look right and then it does look right at the same time I feel like it's kind of hard because it's kind of just like a flesh flower. I don't feel like there's a lot of direction for that, you know, although it is looking honestly pretty gross and definitely like a flesh flower, which I absolutely hate the name of that. But I do need to darken up that inside because it's supposed to be like the mouth. So it's supposed to be like, you know, hollow. Not hollow. Maybe it's not, not the right word. I think I'm gonna cure it. <laughs> All right. I feel like that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna just touch up a couple small places that I feel like aren't, you know, as uniform. And then we'll get on to making the teeth, which I'm excited for and also very scared for how long it's gonna take me. But I have a little bit of a new method that I'm gonna try as opposed to what I did for the Gengar. I feel like that wasn't necessarily super efficient. Let's move on to the teeth now. So I don't want the teeth to look like sparkly white, you know, like they just got some veneers or something. So I'm gonna mix it with with a little bit of this ivory just so they're not just stark white against all that whatever's going on. I don't think I'll need too much of this because we're just making a ton of tiny pieces. And I have a couple different methods I'm gonna kind of try. All right, so my method for the teeth that I'm going to try is I'm gonna take a very tiny small piece. I'm gonna roll it out. What I'm gonna do is just do this and get a bunch of little pieces. They kind of just break off if you put a little bit of pressure in between like so. So I can always trim the pieces later too. And there's definitely gonna be a little bit of variation for the teeth, just, you know, the sizes and whatever. But there we go, we have a bunch of teeth and I'm just going to cure them because why have I been trying to stick them on uncured? I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing that, but I feel like this is a little bit of a better method. So yeah, I'm gonna cure them like this and then this way we can make them really fast without me spending a year just making these teeth. Once they're all cured, I'm just going to drop them all in there. And then there we have some teeth. I'm going to do this, I don't know how many times, till I feel like we have enough. Cause I feel like this probably is barely enough for one leaf and that's if I break some of these in half. 
So stay tuned. All right, here are all of my teeny tiny little teeth I made. And I am really hoping it's going to be enough and that they fit, you know, and that I'm able to get them on. There's a lot of concerns here. I'm gonna use this rhinestone glue because it's super, super thick. And I'm hoping that I can just sit them kind of like upright and have a minute at least to, you know, work on getting a couple in. I really, really love to not have to cure each one individually, but I guess um, we'll see about that. I think I might need to go get my like eyebrow tweezers for this. Oh my gosh, I scared myself that was the wrong one. Oh my gosh, I think it might work. Oh no. All right, gonna have to do way smaller sections. And I was hoping, I think I'm also gonna have to like break a bunch of these because they are a little too long. But I don't wanna lose them. So that'll be fun. It's fine, everything's fine. You know, it's fine. The rest of this set is simple because this one charm is going to be just as much work as a full hand. And I am done with this, at least putting the teeth in anyway. I don't even want to talk about how long that took me, to be honest. I'm a little like, ah, because I need to top coat all of this. <laughs> but I don't even know, look how crazy this looks. And I need to like clean up these edges. They're like kind of pokey. Anyway, I was pretty sure that that gel cured sticky, but it's not sticky, thankfully. So I'm going to clean up some of this around it on the edges. All right, I feel like it's cleaned up pretty well. I'm going to top coat this to the best of my ability. I'm gonna use like a little teeny tiny brush. I don't feel like it really needs to be top coated that much, but I just want like a little bit of extra reinforcements because I'll be really sad if all of these break off. I will literally cry, I'm not even joking. I'm using this Model 1's top coat for this one because this one is pretty liquidy. And I really am trying to not get the teeth. I mean, some of the teeth could be shiny, sure, but all of them should definitely not be shiny. To adhere this, what we're actually going to use is a magnet. And I am just going to glue it on. I'm gonna put a nice healthy amount on. I figure this way I can take it on and off. I just spent so much time on this. I could not imagine ruining it from washing my hands. I don't know. I just would be so incredibly sad. So I figure this way with a magnet, I can take it off if I have something to do, if I don't want to poke the dogs with all these little teeth. You know, this one's gonna be a little less practical than other nails, but that's okay. We're gonna just let that just dry. It'll probably take a while to dry, so we're good. Now for the nails. Sorry, this glass that I have here, I need to get it replaced. It's all scratched up now from what? I have absolutely no idea. So for this set, I am going to just do full cover tips since the main focus definitely was the Demogorgon. So now we just need to do white nails with the splatter. So that's what I'm gonna do. We have a long coffin. So let's just get these on. Just going to use just a clear builder. Not really important how these look underneath. And then I'm just gonna cut these down a little bit. All right, perfect. And now I'm just doing all of the nails white. I feel like I've started to prefer to put my gel out and use like a long brush like this for like overall gel application. I just feel like it goes on so much smoother and more even. And it's also quicker for me anyway, especially around the cuticle. And here we are, I love white nails. I have an idea on how I want to do the blood splatter. So I am going to use this peel off skin liquid and hopefully it's not too messy for what I wanna try, but that's how we're gonna use this stuff. I'm just gonna put it kind of all over without getting it on the nail. Probably like that much. I think this is liquid latex, but I'm not 100% sure. 
All right, you know, it's getting real when I have to cover up my glass area. Now that I have a designated straw for nail stuff, I've seen people dip their straw into gel and then blow to make the splatter. So that's what I'm gonna try. I don't know if that's gonna work. I don't know if it's gonna be super messy. I hope not, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. I don't know quite like how much to put on there. It's kind of like that. Okay, ready? Let's try, ready, ready? Hmm. Okay, maybe I need more. Maybe like gob it on. I'm really hoping because I don't really want to like have to hand paint splatter. It sounds kind of hard. That should be enough, I think. Okay, I'm gonna do it now. I'm nervous. Ooh, okay, I'm nervous. Okay, ready? <gasps> oh my gosh. That was kind of scary. It kind of worked though, and it definitely is messy. All right, now let's try that again. Now that I feel like I got the gist of it a little bit more. Okay, not quite. I feel like I'm getting splatter and not necessarily like droplets. I think we might have to redo all of it. I've only taken it off the main two because I feel like the other ones actually look decent. I think I'm just gonna try to dip it in a little bit and then do like, nope. Oh, you know what? I think it needs to be liquidier. I think that's it. Okay, we're getting somewhere. What I did was I mixed a little bit of that with alcohol. Active problem solving. Definitely can't have too thick of a gel and then otherwise you get those giant lines. All right, now this one should really work, I think. Oh, yes, that one worked so good. This is so fun. All right, I have just the thumbnail. All right, probably last one as long as I can get it. Okay, wow, that was crazy. A lot funner than I expected. Okay, now I'm gonna cure it. I feel like now it's, it's good. Now let's see if we can get off the skin barrier. I will fully get off the rest whenever I wash my hands after this, but I am so happy with how this is looking. So I think that now I'm going to attach the magnet to my nail. I'm gonna use that thick rhinestone gel. All right, I'm just gonna put it right here, right smack dab in the middle. And then I'm gonna cure it. And then now we just top coat everything. I am so excited to see it all together. Definitely going with a shiny top coat, of course. I can't wait to show David these. I don't think I've showed him the Gengar. He usually starts editing while I'm still filming because it just takes me so long to film, but I don't think he's gotten to that part yet. Now I'm just wiping the sticky layer off. And then let's pop the charm on. So now that I've finished all the nails, let's do the comparisons and close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, this is my favorite series to do. We won't be stopping, but please give this video a like anyway. It helps me out a ton and I appreciate it so much, every single one of you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to stay safe doing all of your Halloween activities this month and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye. Okay. Oh, wow. This one's my favorite by far. These look really good. Thank you. The filigree looks like really, really nice. I like that a lot. Thank you. This one looks good. Thank I you. like that. I mean, honestly, they all look really good. Ganger is my favorite though. The other one? Yeah. Oh, sh that's cool. Thank you. Oh, wow. I really want to touch it. touch it. Ah, that's so cool. That's awesome. And it's a magnet, right? Yeah. Can I take it off? Yeah, carefully. That's cool. I'm a fan.